We are going to install something for flavor on the Jeep. And I've been thinking about how to do this for a little while now. I ordered these things from, uh, it was on Amazon, it came from China. It took a while to get here. But they are basically LED lights here. They look like this. And you just thread these in. There's a power cord for them and these shine down uh, a logo you could have them shine down almost anything you wanted but i got little the decepticon logos that match the whole theme of swindle and the jeep i did notice that right underneath here there's a hole in my jl here you can just pop that off and i'm going to try to see if this works this actually avoids me having to actually drill a hole inside the the frame of the door here uh, which i really don't want to do just below the door here, you can see that there's a little uh, little grommet here. It's not a grommet, it's like, well, it's a, it's a cover. I'm not too sure what's supposed to be in there. But there's a fair size hole in there. It's a little bit bigger, but we're gonna use this thing here and we're gonna make this the size. So then we can hopefully pop this back inside. So we're gonna use this to hold that in there and hopefully that'll be good enough for us to install these little uh, door LED lights. So now that we decided we're gonna put this down in here, we need a way to get access to the wiring here. And I looked at all sorts of different ways. I should be able to get power from inside the door, but instead I'm going to go underneath the driver's seat and the passenger seat at the front because I have basically installed new LED lights on the floor of my Jeep for the front and the back. So there's lights there already. The front has lights already there that are white. And now with my LED lights, it's like a strip. It's too bright and you actually can't see the other light anymore at all. So I'm going to disable those lights, feed the power line right inside the door. And I'm going to use that to power these. I already did a quick test and uh, it's the same voltage and everything works. There's like 12 volts. It's basic uh, uh, car electrical here. So I noticed that underneath here, you can see them. There's two bigger torques here that are holding uh, the door panel here. And then there's two small ones here down at the bottom. So those are the obvious ones. But one that you may not know is that there's another one at the top. So if you grab a pick that's shaped kind of like this, then you'll see right inside the door handle here at the very top, you just pop that in there and then you go plop and you can see where this goes in there and then that just slides right in the notch super easy to remove you have to be careful with these because if you're too rough with these i've already had that happen in the back seat uh the very far back i popped this off with a key and then i broke this and now this panel doesn't fit back in there anymore uh, last piece of hardware here that you can move <sighs> Oh, well, that one's really tight. Um, the ones in the door will have some Loctite, which is normal in the door, just to prevent it from rattling loose. We got the last one here that's been removed. I got this thing to remove them, but I think the tool might be better to have something like this, but these are just like the jagged edge type. Then you can find where they are to hold them in here. And this might be a little bit overkill. I'm gonna try to find them. Oh yeah, I can see one right there. This tool might be better, we'll see. And then you just gotta pop these things off without damaging the interior, is all. Kaboom. The ones on the outside of the door here are fairly easy. Um, 
I debated whether or not I should just remove the whole door, which you could do, I guess, but uh, I kind of didn't want to do it. I want to keep them in situ for now. There you go. And then once you have this up, you just lift up and then boop, this whole thing is wide open. And then you can do whatever you need to do for work on the back of this. I'm not going to disconnect everything here because I don't really need to. Okay, now that you've removed the door, and now I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to go and put a hole because now this is inside the door and I don't have access because this is all closed. But there's these pop-out things. I'm not too sure what they're for. I'm gonna use one of these pop-outs. I don't know if I should remove or just cut a hole through this. I may just cut a hole through it. And I'm gonna feed the wire from here. Yeah, this should be fairly easy to feed the wire down in here. It'll go down to there. And then from there, we're gonna feed it out through here and feed that inside of here. And then we're gonna bring that over to the driver's side here. So this here should just pop out pretty easily. Ugh. There you go. So that just pops open. So we'll feed the wire in through here and then it's pretty easy because the light that we're looking for is right on the top over here. The light that we need is right in here. So we're just gonna take the power lines from that light and we're gonna feed that over. It's like right here, it's super close. And that's the best way I can do it because now you'll see this little, you can see the bar, the light bar here. That's something that I installed recently and there's lights that shine down in here. So now we got that drilled in there and we got that popped in there. And now we have the wire. The wire coming out of here, which uh, we might splice that before we feed it through because it's not quite long enough to reach. And then what I did here is I just removed, this is just tape. This is just to stop this from folding back onto itself. Uh, I'm gonna cut this off and we're gonna feed the wire through here. And I might just take black electrical tape just to hold that in there. Uh, the chafing protection is actually from this sheath here. This is just to stop it from this sliding out like this and having the wires exposed as you open and close the door. Silicone tape works good too. It kind of sticks to itself and you can just wrap it around and hold it down. So yeah, and then we're just gonna feed the wire over onto that other so side. There you here. go. I got my wires spliced in here and I got this fish through there. I don't want these spices. They're kind of big inside of this portion here because that way, uh, yeah, you don't want that there. It's too big and clunky. The chances of getting uh, damaged are good. So we're going to tie that in here. I didn't want to mess around. I tried to get this through here. Um, it didn't work very well. Um, I didn't want to take anything apart. So I just used a, uh, a fish line. Uh, you can use almost anything. I use this for all sorts of other types of wiring for my other job, so that works uh, good as well. So now all we gotta do now is just splice this into the power line, which is right there. So you don't need that much of a wire at all. So to help replace this tape stuff here, this is made by 3M. I don't know what the exact brand is. It's called the electrical tape inside the the a thing that's not electrical tape. It's called silicone tape here. This stretches and it sticks to itself. Every time you open up wiring like this and you remove the tape, this is far superior than whatever uh, Dodge or Jeep puts in here. So we just cut this off here and we roll that around there. You can see once it's done, this ain't moving. It's so tight. It actually stretches really nice and holds onto the wire. And then it's just a matter of re-pushing this down now I pushed this down all the way and then before you start hammering this back in here you make sure on the side these are all lined up and then yeah and there you go and the other side also lined up too and uh, be careful here because I scratched the paint just a tiny bit on this side here using this bigger tool here because it was kind of sharp but this was the most effective tool. So you need something that kind of looks like this, but made out of plastic so that it doesn't uh, scuff up your paint. It's not a big deal. You can also use these, but I think these are meant for a slightly different style of interior, uh, but these work as well. But I found that this one was a lot easier to get in and out. You need to power it on to make sure that it works. Okay, so we got some power on. And that you can see the logo here. Yeah, but I don't know how, it's during the daytime, but at least we know it's working here. 
So and then we'll be able to pop this out and there's like a little ring that you can uh, line it up and then tighten it. And then from there, you can actually go and put, plop this back in here and it should kind of stay in one spot. So now what we've got to do is I put the one screw back up in here and pop this back in there and then uh, re-tighten this one and fully tighten this one and then line up the ones at the bottom here. Also, word of advice, if you're doing interior, don't use power tools. Uh, I'm just using a snap-on ratcheted screwdriver. It's more than fast enough. Um, it's very easy to break interior with power tools, especially plastics. So just take a little bit of extra time to just use a manual tool and you'll you won't be able to break it unless you're really trying to almost do it on purpose. But with a, a drill, it's super easy to go half a second too long and to go crack. And now you have this piece of interior that won't stay. And then you'd have to do a repair, which is on plastic. You have to bond it. And uh, not the best of idea. So when you're done, you just put the door back in there, put the screws back in. We got all that tightened up. And you can see here how this actually helped quite a bit. You'll be able to see it right there. And uh, this is actually perfect because uh, I, I, I don't even think I need any of this. But yeah, so you can see the uh, the cool form in the in the board.